All right. Hello, Trisha. Trisha, can you um, introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah. So I'm Trisha Williamson. I've been in the event space for about 20 years now. I started in uh, first and third party events. And then in 2008, I went into the event tech space working from some for some platforms, not Swugo. So if you have questions about other platforms, I can give you the inside scoop. Please ask away. Um, in October of 2020, I went to DocuSign as their event tech manager. Um, when I started at DocuSign, we were in the middle of COVID and DocuSign had become a quasi-essential service. We had a ton of people that needed to know how to move all their agreements online um, or digitally. So I was given the task of creating a way to reach our, our prospects and our customers quickly using digital events. And my team, while we had done live streaming, things like that, had very little experience um, in digital events. Adding to that confusion, they had just left one platform and onboarded Swugo to do their in-person events. And they had a lot of concern as to whether or not Swugo would be able to handle the amount of digital events we needed to do. So we pulled the numbers backstage. And mm -hmm. your team in the past year has run 840 plus events in Swugo in the past year. 840 events. So yeah. um, first question is, uh, you OK? Yeah. Well, uh, my number's a little bit different. Oh, OK, got no, it. No, I was going to say, it's like 792. 792, but, OK, yeah. got it. Yeah. Well, not impressive, I guess. It's yeah. Too. It's whatever. Yeah, they were casual. Um, so first question is, like, how is that even possible? How, do you, how does your team put together so many events? Yeah, so um, when, I, when I started at DocuSign, I think we had 30 Swugo users. We're up to over 60 now. Um, but we just, we really looked at what types of events are we doing, and we try to categorize them into what are the requirements of the, the whole event flow, and how can we create templates around that? So we, um, we worked with our creative team in coming up with some, some templates and worked with my team to create how-to documentation. Um, and we basically have like three categories of events. And so when somebody is onboarded at Swugo or so we get a new license holder, we send them our how-to documentation and tell them where their templates are and say, give it a try and then come to us when you need help. So um, most of our, like my team is just three of us, and uh, most of the users are regional users, and, um, and they're pretty good about coming up to speed. Like that's one of the things I love about Swugo is just how easy it is to use. I've worked at other platforms that are really built around, this is how a developer would create your event, if you all knew how to code. Um, Swugo is, this is how event organizers throw, that have thousands of other decisions to make about not tech-related things, mm. this is the type of software they would use to create their events. Totally. So once we figured out how to do this uh, with North America, it kind of just, I started getting messages and emails from all different departments in the company like, hey, I heard this is, you know, you're, you're the Swugo person and this is really easy to use. So now we have our HR teams, they use Swugo um, for recruiting events. Sales enablement uses it to schedule onboarding. Um, partner teams use it for partner releases. It's just, it's being used company wide for just whatever needs a website and a registration flow that looks somewhat customized, you know, and they need it in an hour or, yeah. or less. That's so cool. Oftentimes, I feel like organizations or HR teams and stuff like that are not so well served by their event or by tech. And so the yeah. ability that your team is able to enable. Yeah, that. I mean, and to, to be clear, like, <laughs> we're there as a support, but it's really, we knew that self-sufficiency was the key. There's no way a team of three people could help. Uh, that many users, that many events. So it, it is really here. You give it a try. You'll see how easy it is to use. And then if you get stuck, um, here's our, our internal community channel. And this is my team, and we can help you out. But um, it really is the way 
to scale. Oh, and then the other process I wanted to mention was our marketing ops person who I think has a love-hate relationship with Swugo. Like he, he's in there more than anyone, but he created this amazing process for our sales and customer success teams who just wanted a quick uh, website, reg site for their one-off events that they needed integrated and to feed into Salesforce where you use our marketing intake tool, which is basically Jira. They request the thing through Jira, it creates all the necessary Salesforce campaigns. It uses an API call to clone an event, which Sugo helped us build. Um, it clones the event, it creates the Zoom webinar, and everything on the event template is merge fields, and it's done. It's ready to go. That is so cool. That so is... I think we did about 150 of those oh. just in six months since he built the process. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. One of the things your team has been uh, shifting on, so rather than having one massive event, you've had smaller regional events. Can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit more about why you made that decision? Uh, well, we shortened our, our event venue, so we did, or the agenda. So we went from a two-day event to a one-day event, and then we decided it would be best in, in, in that agenda format to go to where the customers are. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we decided to split our events from one massive event to two smaller ones. We're seeing how it goes this year, and you know, we'll, we'll see. Maybe next year it'll be back to one. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I love this time of uh, time of change, right? Where we have the chance to like test new things, try mm -hmm. new uh, concepts, like these different regional events, and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. So, awesome. Do we have any questions for Trisha? I can't see because oh yeah, <laughs> can you see? I I can't see if people are yeah right in the back corner there. I'm curious with sixty users, how do you manage the process in the back end with the you know with the assets and the images and the documents and everything that you, are, do you have some person, one person that's kind of managing it all? Do you have training that says, okay, this is your folder and you can only mm -hmm. use this folder or, you know, what's that? Um, so I do have different permissions per region. Uh, they, they all have their own event folder. Our, our brand team created um, an approved image library that anybody can go and choose any of those images and put them on their Sugo pages. Um, but we have run into problems. Usually, the, one of the most common issues we run into is on our country field, everybody wants their countries up at the top when they're creating the event. So <laughs> um, that changes on a regular basis. Uh, my, my team, um, I partner with BW Events. They've created a way to enable that for each region. And we put that on our regional templates so that we don't keep having to deal with that. But um, yeah, for the most part, it is just, here's our, we, we organize our folders, uh, event folders inside of Sugo, as well as our image folders so people can know where to find things easily. Super cool. You mentioned before about this idea of community in, inside of DocuSign, mm -hmm. um, having a community of folks who is able to like answer questions for one another. Can you tell me a little bit yeah. about how you set that up um, and how that's been really helpful for y'all? Yeah, so uh, we just created a channel in our, our um, Slack instance. And basically, when somebody's onboarded or somebody gets a new license, we have a 30-minute to 60-minute call with them and then uh, give them their how-to guide, their checklist, uh, run them through a template, and then every user, and then we invite them to the Slack channel so that everybody can ask questions there. And because we have global users, it's helpful because um, somebody who's asking a question at 2 a.m. my time can get an answer from somebody else who's online. Cool, cool, cool. That's awesome. We do the same thing inside. We have the, our internal community. And that's been incredible because we have some folks in Europe as well. And it's awesome that I can just like wake up and all the fires have been solved already. Yeah. You know, it's awesome. Know, that is a great feeling. <laughs> Any other questions for Tricia? In the back corner there? Uh, so you had mentioned earlier about having three different categories for your events. I was hoping you could tell us a little bit more about how you broke those out. Mm -hmm. And then second part to that, how do you um, 
split up those 60 users? Do all 60 users go across three categories? Are they specialized in a single category? What works best mm -hmm. for you guys? Yeah, I guess um, I should say we have three categories of templates and, and then our fully custom events. So our categories are single session event, multi-session event, and what we call a one pager, which is your reg form is, embe <laughs> is embedded on your landing page. Um, and what we've done is those three templates are available in, in every region. So the footers are localized to point to the right .com sites. Um, the email footers are localized. The language is translated in their, in their native language. We don't always use translations, although we have. So every user knows where to find their templates. We have the templates inside of their event folder. And um, if it's a single session, that's what they use. If it's multi-session, that's what they use, et cetera. In-person events, we typically use our, I'll say like in-person small events, we would use our one pager. Um, but they basically can choose from there. And the way our creative team built our designs is you know what you can drag and drop onto the page in different, in different areas. And if they have questions about they want to try this or that, they can come to our team or to the Swigo channel. Um, and then we have like our, this is our customer event that's coming up. And um, we have uh, eight of these events around the world. And they all follow the same format. So my team will do more of a global deployment here where we typically build out North America first and we gather the assets. Like that's obviously not going to, that image is not going to work in Europe. Um, so we gather those assets, we build out their pages for them, and then we meet with each team to see what they want to change or update or what's not applicable. Um, and because most of the people we're working with are, are familiar in Sugo, they, with Sugo and have a license, they know that they can go in there, add their own sessions, change the text, whatever they need to do. Super cool, super cool. Any other questions for Trisha before we move on? I'm not sure if I can see anybody. Yeah, well, before we wrap this up, I just, yeah. I wanted to say, um, please reach out to me. I would love a community of uh, people to help out. I was just thinking if every single person told me what their favorite Sugo hack was, my life would be totally different by Monday. Like, <laughs> um, so please, I'm just trisha.williamson at DocuSign. Feel free to email me any questions you have that come up later or just tell me what your favorite thing is about Swugo so that I can start doing it too. Maybe we'll get to 1,000 events next year yeah, if maybe. I can find out what all these people are doing. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring it back next year. We'll, we'll do the counter over okay. years. We'll have the bar chart. <laughs> Good deal. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tricia. Can we thank all you. Round of applause.